My grandpa built this off-grid water system that's been giving us free, abundant water for over 70 years. I'm going to show you his secret to how he built this to work so well, we're still using it. This is a super simple, low-tech system that provides water to the house, keeps the sprinklers going, keeps the yard green, the orchard, and supplies fresh, clean water to the swimming pool. It's typically a reliable system, but right now the amount of water coming out of this sprinkler is pathetic. Twice a year there's something we have to do to this system to keep it going. This low volume and low pressure right now is an indication that it's time to go do that thing. So let's go do that. While we do it, I'll show you how this system works. We better get a screwdriver out of the shed because that's the one tool we're going to need. Screwdriver. Now we'll take a little walk up to the water source. It's mostly uphill from the house to the source, which is good because gravity provides the pressure. But there is a challenge up here, getting the water up out of the canyon up to the top so it can go downhill the rest of the way. Oh, that might explain why we lost pressure down below. We do have to consider the bovine factor. Remember how which I said this is a reliable system problems with the pipe. Okay, it's mostly reliable. I didn't account for those things. Who are not super well known for their grace and delicate mannerisms, nor their mindfulness of the impact they may be having on the things they are stepping on or around. The pipe is pulled apart, but there's just enough water flowing out of the one going into the other that we can get a little bit of that water coming out of the sprinkler. We'll put the pipe back together. That should go a long way toward fixing the problem. Even though we just fixed that spot, it's still the time of year we need to go up to the source and make an adjustment. This is the top where the pipe has to go down into the canyon where the water is. The water is way down there at the bottom of the canyon. We somehow need to convince the water that's down there to come all the way up here. So gravity can take it down the hill to where the house is. Let's go down in the canyon and see what's down in the canyon. Here we are with the pipe at the bottom of the canyon and a whole lot of water. Now we need to get some of the water that's down here to go up there, which is very much uphill. Liquid water just doesn't like going uphill. It thinks it's stupid. It just doesn't want to do it. All because of that little gravity concept that supposedly Sir Isaac Newton discovered. Since water doesn't want to go uphill by itself, we're going to have to force it to go up. Putting a pump down here would be impractical. Even a ram pump would have some serious problems here. But Grandpa came up with a more simple solution and that is to use gravity to overpower itself. From this low spot, he ran the pipe up the hill to an even higher spot. If we keep following the pipe up the hill, we eventually run out of pipe. When you run out of pipe, that's how you know you're at the end of the pipe. Should have brought my hard hat. Here's the inlet, which is in the little creek, which doesn't have a whole lot of flow in it right now. The inlet is only barely down in the water. I can hear it sucking air. The solution to that is this pipe. This runs up the hill from here. Okay, it doesn't actually run up the hill. It just lays on the ground going up the hill from here. The other end of the pipe is up the hill from here. If we go down below here, this is where the little creek comes down and meets the big creek. If you want to know why we call this little creek the little creek and why we call the bigger creek the big creek, you can go back and watch the video I made about a year ago about this where I go into detail on how we came up with those names. And if it seems like I've been yelling, it's because this thing is making so much noise, probably more than what you're hearing on camera. It just feels like I need to yell over it, even though I probably really don't need to. So much water and sediment comes down the big creek in the winter if we left it in there, the creek would just wash it away. That's why we move the pipe over to the little creek in the winter. Then in the summer, when the little creek gets too low, we move it back to the big creek. If we follow the big creek upstream a distance, it 
we eventually run into this pipe, which I put up here in the bushes last fall so it won't wash down in the high water in the winter. If we follow this until we run out of pipe, that's how we know we're at the end of the pipe. The main channel used to come down this way and there used to be a really good hole up here to put the pipe in. But winter storms and high water, the creek has changed course to over here. But now we're going to have to find a new hole over here. It has a low spot right here, so that'll make it easy to get the water flowing with a deep hole right above it and plenty of water flow going into it. And the most exciting part, a wild raspberry, which are really good. Looks like more up here. Priorities. I'm surprised the bears even left me any. I'm gonna put this screen on the end of the pipe. This is a tree planting tube. You put this around trees when you plant them to keep deer from eating them. But it also works to put beneath the screen to help hold it open. We put the screen on there to keep the debris and the fish out. We don't want fish going down our pipes. Put a big rock on there to hold it all in place. With this being so low, it should start flowing as it is. Let's go down to the other end, see if anything's happening. Back at the other end. Doesn't look like it's flowing. We'll have to go back up and try something else. The bottom of the pipe is well below water level. We'll move this rock, submerge the pipe even lower into the water. Either this water is so clear I can't see it, or it's not working. I think it's not working. It's significantly downhill from the source to here. Does that make sense? Significantly downhill? I think it does. But it's not directly downhill. There are some bumps it has to go through. I got tired of talking over this noisy thing. We'll do voiceover for a while. I'm flattening out the pipe by lowering the high spots to try to get the air pockets out that are blocking the water flow. If I could get this pipe to go under the log instead of over the log, that would help out a lot with getting some good direct down hillage. I lucked out with that because there just happens to be a joint in the pipe in just the right spot to make that easy to do. I sure am glad I brought a screwdriver. That just saved me a long walk down the hill to go get a screwdriver. I'm trying to get this pipe as low to the ground as I can to keep some bear from snagging its clumsy bear parts on it and knocking it out of place, which would be just like a bear to do that. They are not the most delicate of creatures. Let's see if that made a difference on the lower end of the pipe. Well, that's more like what I was hoping for. And normally what we do is take the screen off of this pipe and connect this pipe to this pipe. But what if I just let this pipe run into this hole? In just a few seconds, the water level has come up to where this is no longer sucking air. Weigh this pipe down even more. This hole has already come up and it's starting to run over. Why not just leave it this way instead of connecting the pipes? If I put the pipe up here in the rocks, then it won't be stirring up mud in the bottom. What's the advantage of doing it this way? I don't know. I've never done it this way before. Maybe the advantage is something will go wrong and that'll give somebody the opportunity to come back up here and play in the creek, which will probably be me. Maybe the advantage will be before winter, when it's time to switch back from the big creek to the little creek, 
it's already in the little creek. All we'll have to do is remove the inlet of the big creek and get it out so it doesn't wash down. And if something goes wrong with that pipe, we still have a little bit of water coming down here. This inlet was in here all winter just the way it is, so maybe it's in a good spot where it is and we'll leave it alone. At least for now, or until maybe I figure out the hard way why this is a bad idea. Down below the pipe, there's plenty of water running, so I think we'll be good for a while. Here's a shot I took of it later after the water cleared up. Nice, clean water. Cold, clean water. Water is abundant here. We're pretty close to the ocean. This goes into the river not far away, which goes into the ocean not far away. We're not really taking much water out of the system. It's not creating any water shortages downstream. This water is just going to make a quick trip to the ocean, which already has plenty of water in it. I don't think the ocean is going to go dry anytime soon. I think this is a low impact system. There's plenty of water still for fish and other wildlife. If water levels do get low in the late summer or fall, we will stop using the sprinkler just to make sure there's plenty of water for fish and everyone else. Now we're downstream at the bottom of the pipe, just before the pipe goes up out of the canyon. The source upstream is higher in elevation than where the pipe has to go over the canyon. So there's enough gravity power up here to push it up over the side. Now I understand why water thinks going uphill is stupid. That's a steep hike up out of there. And I didn't have gravity from up above pushing me up the hill. I had to walk up out of there by myself. Grandpa's secret to this system, to why we are still able to use this system over 70 years later, mostly reliably, minus those things, the secret is in the simplicity of the system. I can picture a lot of people trying to overcomplicate this. Some people might want to put a diversion dam in the creek. Some people might want to put a ram pump in or something like that. Or some kind of a structure to get the, try to control the water to get it to go where you want to go. But Grandpa knew about this stream, things he probably learned from his father and his grandfather, the father, that were here before him, all it would take is one wet season for this stream to either wash out whatever you build. If it didn't wash it out, it would completely fill it up with sediment. Instead of trying to fight against nature and this stream, which he knew was futile, he built a system where he could work with nature. At the time of the year when one creek is favorable for water, put the line in that creek. At the time of the year when the other creek is favorable and the other one is unfavorable, move it to the other one and make a simple system where it's easy to do. Somebody does have to come up here twice a year to do a little something to make it happen, but that's a lot easier than trying to keep a pump maintained and fueled, building infrastructure up here that's just going to get washed out in high water. That twice a year provides a whole year of free, abundant water and it provides the excuse to come up here twice a year and play in the water. Not only that, you get to play in the water while feeling like you're actually accomplishing something. It would be nice to have the pipe buried so it would be protected from cows, bears, anything else, but most of the pipe is running through rugged country where it would be impractical to bury it. From up here down through the prairie, it could be buried. I imagine the reason Grandpa never did that is because if he was going to do it, it would have likely happened with him using a pick and shovel. And the way it is, there just wasn't enough problem with it laying out through the prairie that he was motivated to do that. Now that we're in the age of fancy trenchers and excavators, none of us have been motivated to do it just because it works well enough the way it is. Another challenge he had to face, some nitwit put a county road right in the way of his pipe. Instead of going through all the hassle of digging up the road to run the pipe under the road, he just ran it around to the next gully and used the existing culvert to put the pipe through the culvert under the road. 70 years later, I would say it's worked out well. Let's see if what we did paid off. Let's see if the sprinkler is now working the way it's supposed to. 
That is how a sprinkler is supposed to work. Now it's acting like a sprinkler instead of just acting like a dribbly thing that's just dribbling out a little bit of water. I know this is not going to be practical for most people. We have a little bit of a unique situation here. But maybe there's a little something here you can get a nugget out of. And we got to spend this morning playing in the creek. One of the common questions I got on the video last year, how do we keep the pipes from freezing? Again, we have a little bit of a unique situation here. There's a puddle of water to the west. Some people like to call it the Pacific Ocean. The air here typically blows off the ocean. The temperature of the ocean water typically moderates the climate here along the coast. It keeps it from getting too hot in the summer and it just doesn't get that cold in the winter. It does freeze here, but it doesn't get that cold. Keep a little bit of water running in the pipe. It's usually fine. If it does freeze, that black pipe has a little bit of give to it and it just doesn't freeze that hard. It hasn't been a problem. If we were farther inland or in other parts of the country, especially North Dakota, freezing would definitely be a problem. If you're wondering what the deal is with this ranch, I'll put a link to a video up here where I tell you what's up with this ranch. I'll put something else and maybe in the description I'll put a link to the video from a year ago where we winterized the system. Watching those should give you something to do until I come out with a new video.